I'm here in Orange County, and today we're gonna visit the worst rated restaurant in my town with a plot twist. Whoa. Recently, I've been seeing this trend where people pretend to be food critics going to fancy restaurants. Apparently, all they have to do is dress up really nice, bring a pen and a notebook, pretend to write thoughtful notes, and they've noticed the service was better, they get free dishes, and the manager even comes out to speak with them. But one thing I haven't seen are people reviewing bad restaurants. So in this video, I'm gonna go check out the worst reviewed restaurants in my city, pretend to be a food critic, and see if my experience changes from being bad as they say to good. But before I embark on my investigation, I need to get some pointers from a professional food writer. This is Anne-Marie Panaringan. She's a food writer for Voice of OC and contributing writer for Eater LA and she's been to some of the best restaurants in town. So I thought who better to get tips from than her. What do you typically look for when you go into a restaurant? A lot of it has to do with the details. Mm -hmm. I think if they pay attention to how you know clean an area is the ladies room isn't clean how do I feel about the rest of the restaurant how do they take care of their kitchen and things like that a big part is always going to be about the food you know some places are holes in the wall some of them are more full service if I know that going in what kind of restaurant it is you know I, I adjust my expectations accordingly when you're visiting undercover do they ever fight figure out that you're there to write about them well the PR person never says it but a server or the chef might actually mention that there are actual photos of certain writers posted in kitchens and oh. so they want to be aware of certain people being present in a restaurant whether or not it's a, a formal invite or you know on my own dime on my own personal time uh -huh. so do you have any tips for me so when I go undercover to these restaurants <laughs> I think a lot of it is instinct, like how it makes you feel. Mm -hmm. Like if you feel comfortable and you're enjoying your experience, I think that will say a lot more than necessarily like staring at certain things. Food is always going to be at the very top, obviously. Right. But then right after that, if I had to say it, my husband would say he loves service. And mm -hmm. I completely respect that, like service, service, service. Mm -hmm. For me, I'm a big fan of ambiance. Obviously, if we're talking about a hole in the wall and, you know, that's a whole different set of, you know, you focus more on the food. Right. Do you have like a certain uniform you wear? or is it just like whatever? To be honest, my one big rule is really just not to wear white. <laughs> oh yeah. Well, thank you so much for all of your tips. I am ready to tackle on my first assignment. Yay, good luck. So where are you going? I'm going to Tacos & Co. in Irvine. The food looked questionable, but we'll see how it goes. And hopefully we can find the good in this restaurant. I look forward to it. Yeah, thank you. So equipped with my super subtle notebook, my outfit, and my secret spy glasses that record video, I was ready to head to our first location, Tacos & Co. Here's the plan. Drive in, you capture the restaurant, and then we rob them. Stop! That's gonna get you demonetized. So this is Tacos & Co. in Irvine. It has two stars on Yelp, and the reviews are actually pretty brutal. Let me read some of them off for you. What I actually started doing on Yelp is I'll actually sort it by most recent, basically going to look at the last three to six months. Mm. Because I think as a whole, like it'll give me a better sense, like one person's always gonna have a bad time. There's, right. there's always <laughs> the one that you can never please. Right. And I accept that. This one was from a month ago with two stars and it says pretty bad. Two stars just because the people were fairly kind. The El Gordo Burrito's carne asada tasted like blah, chewy mystery meat that had been boiled in water. The little salsa bar was gross. One star from a month ago. This place is not good at all. Food is bad, salsa are bad, just gross. The only thing was their customer service. Save your money and go elsewhere. Hmm. Okay, I wanna find a good review. This one was from seven months ago with four stars. I gotta say this place is mixed message a little bit with the overall. First off, the food was absolutely delicious and cooked well. Okay, that's good. However, it was my first time trying this place. The restaurant appearance was clean. I guess the main problem is that the lady working behind the counter was putting her hands in everything and eating behind the counter as she's taking orders and doing stuff without washing her hands 
hands or wearing gloves. It was a little bit off-putting. I think the price they charge is good for what they give you. It's definitely a bang for your buck and the toppings bar was really good. That was four stars and it's also a little sus. So I don't know. I'm not trying to validate the bad reviews. I really want to find the good in this place and really make an objective decision of whether their food is good, the customer service is good, and just like check off all the boxes of what we're looking for. Because it could actually be a really good hidden gem and the Yelp reviews are wrong. How much weight do you give Yelp reviews? I take it with a grain of salt. I think the ratings don't always reflect. One person's always gonna have a bad time. There's, right. there's always <laughs> the one that you can never please. Right. And I accept that. So as I headed into Tacos & Co, I soon realized that this was more of a fast casual grab and go type of place that probably didn't care about food critics. So I decided to use this as a chance to warm up my sleuthing and review skills. Hi, can I get the Gordo uh, carne asada burrito, please? Yes. Black uh, or pinto, please? So my observation about the salsa bar, someone said it was pretty gross, but I thought it was pretty clean. There were no spilled salsas on the edge, nothing dried up or crusty. I became a stickler for like, if I happen to use a ladies room, like the ladies room isn't clean, how do I feel about the rest of the restaurant? How do they take care of their kitchen and things like that? So the bathroom was impeccably clean. I went in, not a spot on the toilet, like the floor was clean, there was no funky smell. All right, so this is the street taco that people were complaining about. It is really small, but the toppings are substantial. Let's give it a quick try. And honestly, I don't mind the amount of chips that they gave because I never really eat that much of the chips anyway. There's a lot of meat in there. It's not just onions. So, so far, this looks really good. Now, let's see if it tastes good and how good the quality is. It's actually delicious. I'm not a taco connoisseur, but I would say that taco is pretty darn good. The quality is good, the meat tastes good. This tastes like an al pastor taco that I've had at any other taqueria before. Now, there was a really harsh comment about the El Gordo burrito, which I had to get in the carne asada. Now, they did ask me what kind of beans I wanted in there, which was very nice. Does it look like the best burrito I've ever seen? No, but it looks pretty run-of-the-mill for a taco shop like this. I do want to try the salsa on its own because there were also some very harsh reviews. I thought the taco bar was fairly clean. Mm. I wouldn't say it's gross, but I would say this tastes like a can of tomato pureed with some cilantro very little cilantro and onions so it's not very like well flavored and then let's see this one this one's better it's more spicy but again lacking the flavor that you expect from like a salsa bar so i wouldn't say it's gross or the worst i would say they could probably amp up the seasoning for their salsa a little and here we go let's see how the meat tastes That was not a good first bite. And I don't know if it's their sour cream or what, but it was just a very, very sour, kind of old taste. I want to try another bite, but I'm a little scared. Okay, let's go for this part right here. That bite was much better. I wonder if the rice is just a little bit on the sour side. The comment about the meat being boiled, I saw them grill their meat. I think it was just poorly seasoned. My first bite with the sour cream was not a fair judgment because I don't like sour cream, but the second bite got better. I thought all the comments about the salsa bar was not warranted because it was pretty clean. I mean, it could be a little fuller, but it's not a deal breaker for me. But overall, this place, cleanliness, it was very clean. Service was nice. They were friendly enough for ordering at the counter type of place. Overall, I would give this place three stars. Look, Nate polished it off. So we've been looking at the restaurants based on service, taste, and quality. I found one where quality was not so great and it had a sad interpretation of what Chinese food should be like. So let's head on over there and see what kind of food we can get. Most horrible dim sum experience ever. Food was cold, bland, and some orders never came out. Definitely not coming here again. You guys basically get the point. The food was not great and the service was even worse, it sounds like. But I am here at 
11 o'clock right when they open hopefully the wait won't be as long and the food should be a little better let's go and find out so this time i'm going in with my full food critic getup i got my notebook my glasses for the first person perspective and even my vlog camera check out my second channel at wild honeysuckle and we'll see if having all this changes the experience Upon walking into Capital Dim Sum, my first impression was that everything looked fairly clean, except there was nobody to greet me at the host desk, so I did stand there for a good minute before someone finally came out to greet me. Hi! Three? Thank you. Yes. Oh, can we get a corner seat? So they are whispering to each other. The menu looks like this, and there's a lunch special even. We might do that one. I can't believe I'm gonna have this notebook out. So we're gonna get the turnip cake, fried chive, and I'm just gonna be ordering a bunch. Would you like some chicken feet? I want chicken Hi, yes, I am ready for my order. Uh, I'm sorry, this one only made for the weekend. We don't have it today. Oh, so. okay, that's okay. Thank you so much. So far, everything has been excellent. The surface is great. I did notice them whispering on the side. So we tried to be a little difficult. We asked for a corner table, which wasn't available because that was too big. So we asked for this table instead, and they happily obliged. And then they even asked me if I wanted tea. Oh, wow. Thank you so much. This is a salon bao. It came out within two minutes of me ordering. Another point I actually have to give them which normally at regular restaurants, I do have my son with me. I usually have to ask for plastic utensils and a kitty cup, and they had that ready for me. So I would say service so far has been excellent. But now let's see if the food is good. I think it's good. If I have to compare it to Din Tai Fung, I would say that Din Tai Fung has a more soupiness and the skin is a little thinner so you get like a more delicate bite this one is mostly dough but there's like a very flavorful bite of meat in there thank you you're welcome thank you enjoy yummy oh that's your favorite here let mommy get it for you mommy will get it for you oh, yeah let mommy get it for you this is the chive dumpling mm. it's really good the taste and the quality to me have been Fine, and the food has come out super fast. I do wonder if I go on a busy weekend day, if it would be the same. I'm guessing maybe not. Thank you so much. I didn't realize, but I guess the Hong Kong style has like a crispy noodle. Let's see if the little food critic likes their noodles, because he's a self-proclaimed noodle boy. Noodle boy. How is it, Roro? Cool. Well, it passed the little critics test. Is it the best I've ever had? Definitely not. I feel like it's a little bland. Could be a good thing if you're watching your sodium. I do have to say though, the soup dumpling felt as if they were made and sat for a while. So I didn't get any soup in there. I do think that I've had better. The service has been great, but all the people around are staring at me. Even with the restaurant filling up as it is, they've been super attentive. But just as I thought things were going well, didn't want that to happen. Could have been yours. It could have been theirs, it could have been mine, but it was tucked underneath the vegetables, so I'm really not sure. But either way, we ordered way too much, so I packed it into boxes to go, and upon getting the bill, I was a little bit shocked at the price. I didn't expect for the few things that we ordered to be $75. For lunch? So based on the reviews that we got on Yelp, I would say they were pretty unfairly judged. I thought the service was great. I would actually give them four out of five on service. The taste and quality, there was a little mishap. Upon putting my food in the to-go box, I found a long piece of hair underneath the vegetables. And while I didn't eat that part of the dish, it kind of grossed me out. Are you the kind that gets grossed out by hair in your food? Comment below and let me know. And how would you rate something like that? because my experience up till that point had been so positive. I think for the food, I would give them for taste, for quality, probably three and a half. 
overall, even with the hair incident, because I know that can happen honestly anywhere and it could have been an honest mistake, I would still give them a three and a half stars. So our next location got two and a half stars with 156 reviews and it's called Siena Cucina Italiana in Newport Beach. So I do have to already knock one star off because their hours listed on their website is completely opposite from reality. They're only open from five to nine, but their website says that they're open at noon, which is already really confusing, but let's see what the reviews say. I wish we used the bathroom before we ordered because I wouldn't have. The toilet did not even flush at all. It wasn't clogged. The handle was just broken. Now that leads me back to what Anne Marie was saying about the bathrooms. I'm definitely gonna have to go check that. Came back for a second time six months ago. Still trash. Don't waste your energy and appetite. I don't understand how this place is still in business. I mean, there's plenty of other five stars in the last year so i feel like this is kind of a mixed bag place where we're not really sure if it's good or bad now to really get into my full food critic mode i decided to take this one alone all right we're walking in really cute patio and the ambiance is so nice i think this is the host stand and this is the restaurant there is nobody here what was the soup again uh we have the tomato basil uh which we make with, we make with a touch of cream uh i think i'll do lentil okay what do you recommend for the dishes here dinner unless you're trying to take some home i'd probably say a pasta i'll try the special the angel hair yeah the pasta. thank you have you tried the wine yet oh no not yet. yeah let me know okay. what you think when you, when you try it. okay thanks yeah. Who's turning on the music? Taylor Swift just turned on my earbuds right here. <laughs> I'm going solo at this restaurant. There's no other patrons here, so everything looks super duper clean. Cool up lighting. Yeah, super clean. Just need some of those right there. Thank you so much. Right. Would you like a little fresh cracked pepper? Uh, sure. And you let me know. First couple bites of the soup. What do you think? Really good. You like it? Yes. Did you try the wine too? Yeah, I did. It's good. It's good. All right. Cool. I'm not like a super wine person, yeah. but I like that it's not like a cap. For sure. <laughs> Down to the last drop. So I know traditionally white wine, seafood, but Pinot Noir, you can get away with it for awesome. sure. Awesome. Uh, Parmesan yeah. cheese on top? Uh, yes, please. Okay. That's good. You're there? Yeah. All right. Thank you so much. Enjoy. Thank you. Mm. Everything here is so good. Just took my first bite. Oh, it's first so bite. good. Okay, cool. Awesome. It's super lemony and light. Okay, so because my experience has been so good so far, I really want to know why their hours are so confusing and why it doesn't match up to the website. This place has been the best out of all of them so far. The food is exceptionally good. The service has been so attentive. I don't understand the bad reviews that it got. It says on the website that you guys are open from like noon to one. I tried to go for lunch, but oh, it was closed. Yeah, so um, that all that Google and Yelp stuff, they mm. never called to update with oh. us um, and it's probably outdated since pre-pandemic oh wow and post-pandemic just like everywhere else low on staff yeah um, just everything's so weird now it's tough because everyone here that works here knows how to do their job really well and just you know it's 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 hard to just sit here and, and like wait you know, I know. that but breaks my heart to hear him say that you guys this Siena Cucino place did not deserve that Yelp review that it got and it definitely deserves way more stars than two and a half. Literally look, I am cleaning it up. I'm full, but I do want to order dessert just to support them. Maybe I'll just take it home for my kids. Yeah, we'll do that. Out of all three of them, I would give this one a four and a half stars actually. Someone could have been there at the beginning, but it's not a big deal because they came out. So upon coming home and then researching why that restaurant had such low reviews, I stumbled upon an article from 2018 about a particular incident that really drove a lot of those negative reviews like four to five years ago. And honestly, based on Anne Marie's advice, I really only sorted through the last year to get a true reaction. 
satisfaction of what the restaurant is like as of today. Here's your tiramisu. Mm. Which then poses another question. Should food critics know the backstory of a restaurant and its history, or should they go in blind like I did? Has their management changed since then? I don't know. Is that employee still there? I don't know. I really do hope a lot has changed since that incident, but my reaction was purely based off of my experience from that day. But I wanna know which one you guys thought needed more improvement. Comment below and let me know. Don't forget to subscribe if you guys wanna see more of these types of videos. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.